But Kenji says, what about Spiridon? So yeah, there's this guy on YouTube called Father Spiridon. And I've been meaning to expose him for a while. So there's this three minute long video. Is salvation by faith alone or by works? And this is a great video because it just shows what exactly this uh, reprobate, unbeliever, false prophet teaches. And a lot of Christians, they treat this guy, oh, well, he's an old wise wizard looking guy. So he must know a lot. And it's like, just because someone has a beard doesn't mean they're trustworthy. Just because someone has a cross on them doesn't mean they're trustworthy. So it says here, do we find salvation through works or faith alone? An orthodox perspective. You know, I, I, need, I need to say this is important for people to understand. If someone is a priest or a pastor and is a part of a false denomination, you shouldn't listen to that person. There is no reason anyone watching me should be listening to Mar Marie Emmanuel. Not a single reason anyone who watches my channel should be watching Mar Marie Emmanuel. He's a part of the Assyrian Church of the East. They're Trinitarian heretics. They reject faith alone. They reject once saved, always saved. No reason whatsoever any of you should be watching someone like this. They, they're heretics. Straight up. Just straight up heresy. And the same thing with this guy. It, he's literally a part of the Orthodox Church. It says at the beginning of this video, an Orthodox perspective. If you see someone with a Vatican flag in their profile picture or an Orthodox cross in their profile picture, unsubscribe, unfollow, block, not interested we don't watch these kinds of people if someone's a lutheran you shouldn't be watching them <laughs> you know if someone's out here calling himself a calvinist don't watch that no reason listen it says in the bible a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump a lot of what mar Marie emmanuel says is true it's great it's based but a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump you know what that means? It means a little bit of lies ruins the whole truth. Can someone be wrong about the secondary issues, right? Yeah, someone can be wrong about the secondary issues. But if they're wrong about the primary issues of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, if they're wrong about that, there is zero reason to listen to anything they say because they're wrong on the fundamentals. Let's go to Hebrews chapter five, verse 12. It says this, it says, for the time when you ought to be teachers, you need that one teach you again, the first principles of the oracles of God. There are many people out here who are claiming to be teachers, like this guy, Father Spiridon, but they need someone to teach them the basics of Christianity. The first principles of Christianity. If someone doesn't know the basics, there's no reason to listen to them at all. Listen to this. They have become as such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. If someone does not know the basics of Christianity, they should not be someone you listen to as a teacher. They are a babe in Christ at best, false prophet at worst. Like it's ridiculous. People have no common sense. If someone doesn't know how salvation works, I can't trust them on teaching me about how to live the Christian life. You can't. You literally can't trust someone who's unsaved to teach you about morality or any of the secondary issues at all. You can't trust them. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The difficult stuff in the Bible, the difficult stuff is discerning good and evil. Morality, that's the meat. That's the deep spiritual meat. That's the 
meat of the word of God, morality. Morality is the difficult stuff. The easy stuff is salvation. If they can't even get the easy stuff right, how are they going to teach me about morality, about the commandments, about living a righteous life? Which is all these people ever talk about, by the way. All they ever talk about, all these false prophets ever talk about is meat, 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 meat. Repent of your sins, repent of your sins, repent of your sins. Do good works, 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 works. Faith of that works is dead, but they don't even know the basics. How are they going to teach me about this advanced stuff? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation. What is the foundation of Christianity? What are the basic principles of Christ? The basic principles of the doctrine of Christ. Repentance from dead works. You know what repentance of dead works means? It means when it says in the Bible, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is that talking about repenting of your sins? It's talking about repenting and believing on God on Christ for salvation. Faith towards God, believing God's existence and knowing that salvation is by faith alone without works. A doctrine of baptisms, being able to differentiate the difference between baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism in water, and baptism of fire, knowing the difference between the three is something that you must know before you can be a teacher. Laying on of hands. If you do not believe that the gifts are active in the body, you should not be a teacher. The resurrection of the dead. If you don't know what the Christian afterlife looks like, if you don't know about the resurrection, shouldn't be a teacher. If they're not teaching about the resurrection, shouldn't be the teacher. They deny the resurrection of the dead, if they, or if they deny the resurrection of Christ, shouldn't be a teacher. And finally, eternal judgment. Our judgment is eternal. There's an eternal destination for every person. You cannot change. Once you're dead, a man is appointed one time to die and one time to be judged. There's no second chances. Once you're dead, that's it. It's over. If anyone is denying those things or they, or they don't understand those things, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them about anything. Especially also consider this, if they are a part of an, a, of a denomination, which does not understand those things like the Orthodox, they don't understand repentance from dead works. They wouldn't, they couldn't, they, an Orthodox priest could not tell you what repentance from dead works means. He literally could not tell you what that means. They couldn't tell you what the multiple baptisms in the Bible are. Most people don't, most Christians don't know there are multiple baptisms that you can do as a Christian. Most people don't know that. And they also don't know that there's only one baptism for salvation out of the three or four. There's actually like seven baptisms in the Bible, I think. Seven. Most people don't know about the seven baptisms in the Bible. And they don't know that only one saves you, you know? Most people think that you need two baptisms. You need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit and then baptized by water. There's only one baptism for salvation, guy. My friend, there's only one baptism unto salvation. Only one. Orthodox don't believe that. They think baptism of the Holy Spirit and water baptism are the same thing. They think it's the same thing. Don't listen to someone who's a part of a false denomination. Even if what they're saying sounds good, you can't trust them. It's just the unfortunate reality that they're going to be tainted and their, doct their doctrines, their teachings are going to be tainted by the falsehood that their denomination teaches. During the Reformation, the Roman Catholics and Protestant theologians debated about whether salvation is achieved through faith alone or through works. Now, let's pause right here. If you still have to debate whether salvation is by faith alone or faith plus works, if you haven't figured that out, then you do not understand what repentance from dead works is. If you don't know whether or not salvation is by faith alone 
then you don't know what repentance from dead works means, right? Now, if you don't know what repentance from dead works means, you should not be teaching. So there's plenty of YouTubers who go around doing debates about faith alone. And they're like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's by like, just great example, Ruslan KD. Ruslan KD is kind of like, well, I don't know. I mean, salvation could be by faith alone, but don't we, don't you think we need works? Same with Joe Kirby from, you know, off the curb ministry. Oh, well, salvation, I mean, it's by faith in Christ, but there, there's clearly a works element. Don't listen to those people. They are unlearned, unstable, no reason to listen to these people. But in fact, neither of these positions is entirely satisfactory. All right, you hear that? You hear that right there? So already, everyone that's watching this should know to totally disregard Father Spiridon. Because he just denied that repentance of dead works is what we must do to be saved. In order to be saved, all you have to do is repent of your dead works. That's it. Do you know what that means? It means you realize that your works can never save you, that works are not required whatsoever to get to heaven, and you accept that the only thing that can save you is the blood of Jesus Christ, which he spilled on the cross 2,000 years ago. That's it. Now, he just said, Neither salvation by works or faith alone is true. So he rejects faith alone. Rejecting faith alone means that you don't understand repentance of dead works. This guy still is trusting in his dead works to save him. And so he's a babe in Christ at best. At worst, he's a false prophet. And I know he's a false prophet. If you look at the early church, and indeed the teaching of orthodoxy today, we discover something so much richer and deeper. St. James. When we look at the teachings of the early church, we find some, something so much richer and deeper. So he's saying, uh, salvation's so deep. It's so rich and deep. If you, I, I don't know how many times I have to say this. Salvation is the basic principle of the doctrine of Christ. It is the first thing you must understand about Christianity, according to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. It's the first thing you need to be able to understand. Now, Orthodox Christians, they say, salvation is so hard. It's so difficult to understand. It's so rich and deep. It, if you think salvation's difficult to understand, you are not even a Christian yet. Let alone a teacher of the word of God. You're not even a Christian. If you can't understand salvation, if you're confused about something, it's so deep and complex. Red flag. Hey, don't listen to this guy. Hey, don't listen to him. <laughs> Is it all you need to know? If you want to know if someone's a false prophet, ask them. Just straight up ask them, what are your views about salvation? There was a church who wanted to work with us for Retake NYC. And uh, bro they, they reached out to Brother uh, Jabesh, and Jabesh directed them to me. And so I talked to them, and I'm like, okay, here's what I'll do. So I just asked them, I said, how do I get saved? I asked them, I think I asked them on an alt account. I said, how, how do you get saved? And this church said, this is something that's a little bit too deep to get into over the internet, over, over, uh, DMs on Instagram as I DM them on Instagram. I told Jay Bush instantaneously. I said that we don't want to have anything to do with these people. They can't tell us about salvation. We want nothing to do with them. They said, he said, well, we, we don't know what they believe. They, we don't know exactly. No, 
Salvation is simple. Faith alone in Christ alone without works. Once you are saved, you are always saved. You are predestined to have eternal life. That's it. That's so easy to explain that. So simple. Unbelievably simple. Like, unbelievably simple. As soon as I saw that these people said, oh, it's too complex to talk about it over Instagram DMs. That's all I need to know about these people. We're not going to work with these people. We don't want these people associate with us. They are false prophets. If, if a priest can't tell you how to be saved simply, it's, it's complex. You know, there's this famous video of Orthodox priests. They get asked in the street, Hey, do you know for sure if you're going to heaven when you die? They said no. At that instant, you should know orthodoxy is false. You should not be an orthodox. <laughs> if, a, if an orthodox priest, if you ask any orthodox priest and you ask them, Hey, do you know if you're going to heaven? Every single one is going to tell you, no. Now, why would I trust a priest who doesn't know whether or not they're going to heaven to teach me how to get to heaven? Are you stupid? Are you retarded? Like, I, I don't get it with people. It's like, they, they just get so trapped up and, you know, oh, well, they have gold, uh, they, they wear gold jewelry. They dress like a girl in a fancy little dress. They wear a pot as a hat. <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, oh, they have long hair and beards. <laughs> you know, oh, he, he's dressed up like a wizard. You know, if someone's dressing up like a wizard, that should be a red flag not to listen to them. If, so, if, a, if a motherfucker is dressed up like a wizard, they're doing witchcraft. Witchcraft is a sin. Lutherans, they're priests dressed like wizards. That, huh. you, you don't think maybe they're doing witchcraft? Catholics, they're priests dressed up like fucking wizards. The Pope dresses like a wizard. I don't know, guys. Is Catholicism true? I don't know. They're how obvious do they have to make it that they're wrong? This guy looks like number one. This nigga is fat, fat as fuck. This dude looks like a soy jack. Coomer chud, okay? Look at him. Just just look at him. Like, I shouldn't have to point this out. I shouldn't have to point this out. He's fat. Telling me to repent of my sins, do good works. Why don't you get on the fucking treadmill? Do the good work of getting on the fucking treadmill, nigga. What the fuck is wrong with people? They listen to someone like this. Oh, you gotta do good works to be saved. You have to have a mixture of faith and works. You're fat! Do the good work of getting on a fucking treadmill. Telling me, oh, you gotta do good works. We, we, we would look at the Orthodox perspective and the Church Fathers, the, the deep and complex perspective of the Orthodox Church. We find that salvation is not simply by works alone or by faith alone, but it is a mixture of both. Okay, do the good work of getting on the fucking treadmill? And then I'll listen to you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a chance. You know, it agitates me because I feel like people should know better not to listen to someone like this. It's like blatant hypocrisy. He literally just said it's a mix of faith and works to save you. Dude can't even do the good work of walking a mile every day. 
Yo, I I don't know if you guys have watched our channel. I've lost a significant amount of weight. I, I I'm pretty skinny now compared to what I was, I don't know, six months ago. Super skinny. And I'm probably gonna lose a, like probably like ten more pounds or so. All it takes to lose weight, right? It's just walking a mile every day. That's it. I really have like barely changed my eating habits. You know, um, like I, I maybe eat like one less meal a day. I only eat like two meals a day. Okay. Two meals a day. And I walk a mile every day. You can't even do that good work. You know, the apostle Paul, he was walking from fucking Israel all the way to fucking Slovakia. He walked from Israel to Athens on foot. Could you do that? Bro's telling me I gotta do good works. You know, if you can't even do the good work of walking to preach the gospel. And then, of course, you know, this Orthodox in the chat, IRS Shill. Of course, your name's IRS Shill, by the way. These people always tell on themselves. They always tell on themselves, dude. <laughs> This nigga's dressed like a fucking wizard. This guy's called IRS Shill. And obviously, you know, that's a joke. But they always fucking tell on themselves. Because imagine calling what the first church preach a heresy. The Delulu of this channel. You know, I just did a video exposing what the first, the, the original church actually taught. The early church taught. It's not what this nigga's teaching you. Faith without works is dead. This kind of faith is the faith of the demons, the demons who believe but do not respond, do not allow that faith to transform them, to draw them closer to God. And when we look at the encounter of Jesus with the rich man, the rich young man who says, I've kept all the commandments, he considers himself rich, he considers that he has achieved some kind of goodness. But Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? Only God is good. This we may dare to say is a curious thing to say. After all, didn't God create all things and declare it good? And in Genesis on the sixth day, didn't he look at man and declare us very good? And Christ himself, who is one essence with the Father, doesn't he share in the Father's goodness? Yes. But of course, right, like, we all it takes for to get someone to listen to you, right? This should be a lesson to everyone. People are so gullible. People, the average person, the average normie, okay, blue pilled, stupid normie. All it takes to convince them of something is to just talk in a British accent and. Sound spiritual and confident, and confidently assert things as being true. Satan is God. Oh, and now everyone will just believe Satan is God, because I say that. The Bible teaches, in James chapter 2, that to believe in God is not enough for salvation. And everyone just is like fucking hypnotized by the British accent. Uh, 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 he's he sound like the uh, the guy from the from medieval times. Uh, he's just like a wizard. Uh, like or you know, if you want to reach you know maybe a more contemporary Protestant audience, you know, dress in a suit, right? Dress in a suit. Right, where where your button up white shirt and a blue suit jacket. You know, if you want to be hip, you can wear jeans, and then go out and go and you go. Oh, pull washer! I'm not pull washer anymore. I'm pull the aged, the weakest man in the world. You know, all it takes, right, is to just have balls and just assert shit confidently. Doesn't have to be true. You don't actually have to worry about being right, you know? Now, you do it for God. In God's eyes, God God knows when you're lying. 
But for the average blue-pilled retard normie, all you had to do is just assert things. Just assert things. And people will just believe you. Just confidently... You know, I... I, I I was, I'm teaching, I taught secret doctrine this. We had, we were having a conversation about making videos. And I was like, when you talk in your videos, you have to just assert things. I, like I speak in declarations, you know, you got to speak in declarations of facts. Okay. That, that's the way you should speak. Now, obviously, do I always do that? No, I, I get amped up. I talk in different ways to impress different points, but if you really want people to listen to you, you speak in declarations, clear declarations with a period at the end. Most people, because most people don't think for themselves, 90% of people are followers who just follow whatever. Just speak in declarations and you can be a cult leader. This is what David Benjamin does, right? He just confidently asserts things which are not true have no scriptural basis but because he just asserts them as facts people are like well he's so confident about it i i mean why would he say it if he was lying <laughs> that's how stupid people are this and then, and then people get on me because i'm like democracy's gay fuck democracy because i say shit like that <laughs> But that goes against our values as a nation. It's, it's like, bro, m most people, all you have to do to convince someone that you're telling the truth is just assert it as a fact, as though it was a fact. The sky's red right now. Yeah, no, no, I'm not going to get, don't get me wrong, okay? Some false prophets are hard to distinguish. I think David Benjamin, he's very hard to distinguish him as a false prophet the bible tells us the guide to distinguishing okay you want the foolproof guide right because some people they're not going to dress up like a wizard to let you know that they're doing witchcraft you know some people they're not going to make it obvious that they're doing witchcraft okay some people aren't going to do that so the key to figuring out if someone's a false prophet right if they're not doing something obvious like dressing like a wizard then this is the guide this is foolproof it works 100 percent of the time okay 100 percent of the time if you follow this exact procedure you will be able to distinguish who is a false prophet and who's a true prophet so in matthew chapter 7 it says this it says beware false prophets this is verse 15 of matthew chapter 7 Beware false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. So there are some people who look like a Christian, sound like a Christian. They're identical. They're like skinwalkers, okay? They're like skinwalkers, all right? You can't clearly distinguish them from a Christian many times. So we got to be careful. We got to beware. We got to be afraid of people who are blending in, pretending to be Christians, but in reality, they're false prophets. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, whereby by their fruits you shall know them. Now, this is taken so out of context it's not even funny it's like not even funny how out of context this verse is taken but what is this saying it's saying that there are different kinds of trees and every kind of tree bears fruit of its own kind now a lot of people say oh so good works did it say good works use your brain so 
Let's go to the parable of the sower. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus gives us the parable of the sower. Now, I'm not going to read it, but everyone who's watching this, you guys probably know the parable of the sower. If you don't know what the parable of the sower is, um, it's okay, but you're a babe in Christ, and you got to do some more research, all right? This, this stream is deep spiritual meat, okay? This is not for babes in Christ. But just remember, salvation is by faith alone, without works. You don't need works to prove you're saved. You don't need works to be saved. You just believe in Jesus. Trust him alone for your salvation. What he did on the cross was good enough to get you saved, all right? It's not for you. If you don't know the parable of the sower, the stream is not for you, all right? Not trying to be rude. It's just, it's not for you. You're going to get confused, okay? But so in the parable of the sower, at the end of its rendition in Mark... Jesus says, if you do not understand this parable, you will not understand any of my parables. So if we want to understand Jesus' parables, we got to understand the parable of the sower. Now, in the parable of the sower, we learn that plants represent the gospel. Or sorry, sorry. Seeds represent the gospel. Seeds in all of Jesus' parables, seeds represent the gospel. Okay? Dirt, the ground which the seed is planted in, represents the hearts of men. The plant which grows from the seed out of the heart of men, out of the dirt, is faith okay and then that faith produces fruit but jesus never explains in any of his parables what fruit is so we have to use reasoning to figure out what the fruit is now some people are going to say it's good works doesn't logically flow from that well what is inside of a fruit if you cut an apple in half what you're going to find is that inside the apple the apple has seeds black little seeds all right so all fruits carry seeds and biologically the reason why fruit exists is that trees are trying to entice animals humans birds to eat the fruit so that they will ingest the seed and poop out the seed somewhere else to grow a new tree. So now we get the full life cycle of the Christian. So the Christian has the seed planted in them. They grow up into a strong faith. That faith produces fruit, which then spreads the gospel. So what is good fruit as a Christian? Good fruit is when you preach the gospel to someone else. That's bearing fruit. Do you guys understand? This is deep wisdom here, okay? So, he says, you can distinguish a false prophet from a true prophet by examining their fruit. So, what are we supposed to be examining when it says examine their fruit, it's talking about examining their gospel presentation. How does this person preach the gospel? If they are preaching the gospel and it's wrong, they're a false prophet. That's what it's telling you. It's, it's literally, it's that easy. Is this person preaching the true gospel or is he preaching a false gospel? Now, David Benjamin, I know that David Benjamin is a false prophet. The reason I know he's a false prophet is because he says, number one, he says that Jesus had to be saved, that Jesus was the first to partake in the great salvation. So he's a false prophet right there. He also says that Calvinists can be saved. Once again, 
false prophet. You cannot be a Calvinist and be saved. You can be an ex-Calvinist and be saved. You can be an ex-Osasser, ex-Free Gracer who gets, you know, consumed into the false doctrine of Calvinism. But the false doctrine of Calvinism cannot save you. So I know David Benjamin's a false prophet because he preaches a different gospel. Now, it's very similar to the true gospel, but it's different, right? So closely examine the fruit. Get out a magnifying glass and listen to every word they say. Are they preaching faith alone and Christ alone without works? Are they preaching that once you're saved, you cannot lose your salvation in any way, shape, or form? Are they preaching that works do not prove you're saved? What are they saying? So if you want to be sure you can distinguish a false prophet from a true prophet 100% of the time, because like I said, sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's obvious, but sometimes it's not so obvious. Inspect the fruit. I'm a fruit inspector. You know, a lot, they're, they're, that's like a popular free grace meme. Don't be a fruit inspector because people say that the fruit is good works and that's not what it is the fruit is preaching of the gospel if someone's bearing bad fruit they're a false prophet we who were created in god's image created to be good have rebelled against our nature we choose what is not in our nature we choose evil so christ is saying to the rich young man we must look to God as the only source, the only source of all goodness. The rich young man believing that he has created his own goodness, that he is the source of his own goodness through his good actions, is wrong. Works do not make us good. We do not achieve goodness through anything we can do. So why then repent? Why struggle with our sins and our passions? Why fast? We do all of these things, these works, to overcome the barriers that we have placed between ourselves and God's grace. We're not starting... So, he just said right there, right? Inspect the fruit. That's what we're doing right now. We are inspecting his fruit. This is his fruit. This video right here, preaching the gospel, talking to, teaching people about salvation, right? Romans 1.16, it says... The gospel is the power of salvation to everyone who believes in Jesus. So, if anyone makes a video about salvation, that is fruit. If anyone has a conversation with you about salvation, that's them bearing fruit. Because the gospel is the power of salvation. Fruit is preaching the gospel. Talking about salvation is fruit. His fruit is filthy, dude. It's corrupt. It's rotten fruit right here. This is rotten fruit. He says that your sin can keep you from receiving God's grace. Now, what does the Bible say? Right? I go based on the word of God. So what does the Bible say? Can sin separate us from the love of God? Can it separate us from the grace of God? Romans 8.38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing you can do in your life, in the present or in the future can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing you can do can separate you from the grace of God. Once you are saved, you are always saved. But this guy's not teaching what the Bible says. He's not telling me what this says. He's saying my sin can separate me from the grace of God. It can't. But that's what he's saying. Rotten fruit inspect the fruit at a point zero 
and building up to goodness, we've already filled the space between ourselves and God with the passions, with sins, which we must repent of and overcome. And each time we struggle, God sees us. He blesses us. He draws us closer to himself. God, who is the only source of all goodness, salvation is a free gift. But we must work and repent in order to enable ourselves to receive God's grace. Yeah, and this verse is not about salvation, right? All these false prophets can do when they read the Bible is just misunderstand it. The verse has nothing to do with salvation at all, in any way, shape, or form. Nothing to do with salvation. Those are my thoughts on Father Spiridon since he asked, and we're doing like a Q&A right now. Instead of doing a Minecraft stream, we're doing a Q&A. Because Minecraft shut down its servers for logging in, so I can't log in to play. <laughs> so, yeah, Spiridon, don't listen to that guy. False prophet. He's an Eastern Orthodox. Don't listen to anyone who's a part of a false denomination. A little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. 